the county of Los Angeles uh, has 10 million residents, uh, which makes us the most uh, populous county in the country. And then imagine that almost four out of every 10 uh, residents, uh, 3.5 million people are immigrants uh, born uh, abroad. And uh, what they contribute uh, to the county uh, is vital uh, to the county economy, uh, to the county's uh, culture, uh, just to the quality of life. So uh, without the full engagement, without the full uh, participation of our immigrant communities, uh, it becomes very difficult for the county to function in the way uh, we like. And, and that's why uh, you know, we brought uh, this uh, uh, campaign, ethnic media, hyper-local media campaign, uh, to let our communities know that the county uh, stands uh, behind them, uh, particularly this during this uh, you know, critical times in dealing with the pandemic. And certainly uh, immigration uh, legal services to help them is vital. And as you know, uh, we rely uh, on the ethnic media. Uh, this is uh, not uh, the first time, certainly not to this extent, but uh, throughout, uh, we know uh, you are uh, trusted voices in those communities uh, where uh, your partnership in delivering the information and really uh, assuring our communities that it is okay to access these services. Uh, because as you know, uh, immigrants uh, have a, a double concern. Uh, you know, the pandemic is one thing, but they also uh, fear that if they access these services, it may have a negative impact on uh, their immigration status. Uh, you will hear from my colleagues uh, in a minute uh, about uh, those services available. Uh, but uh, again, we rely uh, on you uh, ethnic media uh, outlets uh, to get the word out that is uh, helpful, that is timely, and that is accurate, which is very important. So uh, I'm going to uh, you know, briefly uh, review uh, something that is very dear uh, and close to my heart. And that is the harm that uh, uh, fake uh, attorneys, people who pretend to be attorneys, people who pretend that they know uh, legal uh, uh, rules and procedures and charge our immigrant uh, communities uh, hefty fees supposedly to help them uh, uh, get through some immigration uh, uh, case, uh, end up uh, harming them, not just by uh, the money they take from our uh, immigrants, money that they cannot afford to uh, waste, but also uh, you know, at the end of, of uh, many cases, uh, the uh, consumer, the immigrant, ends up in the worst situation because uh, when someone opens a case, it closes in one of two ways. Uh, the person uh, gets accepted or the person gets denied. And if those pretending to be attorneys don't know uh, what they are doing or intentionally uh, provide information that is inaccurate, uh, that is uh, wrong, then uh, that's going to uh, result uh, on a deportation proceeding. And so now we end up with a family who has uh, lost their money and now they are facing deportation proceedings. And sadly, many immigrants who are victimized by these individuals fear that if they file a complaint to get some help, that's going to impact their immigration status. They don't wanna become a part of some uh, government uh, uh, undertake an investigation uh, procedure. And so they uh, rather uh, not complain, uh, lose the money and sometimes face uh, the consequences of some immigration uh, procedure against them. So uh, I want to uh, remind uh, you know, our friends in the ethnic media services uh, to alert uh, our immigrant communities that uh, it is understandable when we're facing uh, uncertainty a tremendous need. We're going to look uh, for people who claim to have the answers, 
but we have to be very careful. Uh, we have to go uh, uh, to legal aid organizations that provide uh, legitimate services uh, for free or very low cost. Uh, we should uh, consult uh, also with uh, licensed attorneys, but we should not go uh, to individuals who are not attorneys, who don't have the right under California law to provide legal advice uh, to us. So uh, our Office of Immigrant Affairs uh, is uh, the home for immigrants and their families uh, to learn uh, about these issues. Uh, they can get uh, information or we can connect them uh, to the right place uh, to get the right help. Uh, if you have uh, one bar left on your phone's battery, I would always uh, say, you know, use that, that bar to give us a call and get the right help. And I'm talking, uh, you know, about services that go beyond the legal representation. That is one issue that, that we see uh, constantly, one issue that is very harmful and certainly we want to prevent it. But remember, uh, we have information about services for older adults, immigrant older adults. Uh, imagine uh, people who are concerned about going to the supermarket uh, you know, because of the high risk of exposure uh, to the virus. Uh, there are programs to help them get through this. Uh, we're talking about, uh, you know, renters, as you will hear in a minute, uh, people facing uh, foreclosure. Uh, there are uh, prevention services. We have information and can connect you to those. Uh, street vendors, it's another, uh, you know, segment of our uh, vulnerable population. Sometimes they don't know the basic information, you know, about how to go about it. Uh, they can call us. We can counsel them, we can provide information, we can connect them to the right place. And the same thing goes uh, as we cover in past debriefings with people who don't even have a food to feed their families. Uh, please give us a call. We have that information available uh, where you can get those resources. And lastly, uh, you know, just remember that most of these services, as will be uh, discussed in more detail by my colleague, uh, Dan Shar, are not impacting the immigration status of our communities. Uh, do not be afraid to seek the help you need. Uh, we want to hear from you. We will give you the information. We will connect you to those services.